So a lot of people have been wanting me to do a video trying to remake Sonic, but there are a lot of games that I've played, and even more that I haven't, so it was hard to choose just one. I could try to remake Sonic 06 and try to fix the, uh, features that the game had, or I could try to do something wacky like giving Sonic a sword. Wait, no, that already exists. And 10 year old me enjoyed that more than I probably should have. But actually, I think I'm going to remake the original Sonic the Hedgehog because of how much time I spent playing the original games. As a kid, I only owned a couple of games for the Sega Genesis. I had Sonic 1, 2, and 3, Sonic 3D Blast, Sonic Spinball, and Richard Scarry's Busy Town. Hi, I would like to have some lemonade. Needless to say, I played a lot of Sonic growing up. And I just think that Green Hill Zone Act 1 was such an iconic level in the game that even Sega decided to remake it to some degree in Sonic Generations. However, something was still lacking about the remade version in Generations, and that's the third dimension. While Sonic Generations merely updated the level to use modern graphics and assets, I plan on reimagining the level as if it were designed as a 3D game. So in order to try and remake it as accurately as possible, I needed an accurate picture of the level to use as a reference. And by reference I mean completely tracing the outline of the level. After I finished the outline of the level, I was left with a boring looking grey shape. So the next thing I did was make materials for the grass, the dirt, and apply them to the outline. But at this point, I still just have a 2D shape. So to fix this, I just dragged it out, and now it's 3D. I intentionally held off on some parts for now, like this loop. And you'll see why later. But for now, we have to fix this problem of staring off into the infinite void. First, I made a simple plane and stretched it out to represent the water, so that you can see the background of the level. Then I reused the same water shader that I used in my portal video to make the goo. And now we have a pretty convincing body of water surrounding us. Finally, I needed to make a new skybox to fully immerse ourselves into this world. Now there are some things that I know how to do in game dev, but making a proper skybox isn't one of those things. So I simply made a square with a repeating texture and made a dome out of it, and the results are actually really good. Except when you look at it from this side. At this point the bulk of the level design was now finished, and now I just had to go around placing tiny props like trees and flowers. I found a bunch of models on Sketchfab for all of these, and got to work on adding them into the game. First I had the palm trees, then the yellow and purple flowers, as well as these tiny little bushes. Then I found a model for an old CRT monitor, because for some reason the developers decided to use them as item boxes in this game. And it may look fine if we look at it from here, but when you turn this into a 3D game, it kinda doesn't make sense anymore. Then I added the bridges, some rocks, and these weird totem things. The last 3D model that I could find was for the end of the level signpost that has Sonic's face on one side and Eggman's face on the other. Since I couldn't find a model for the springs, checkpoint, or spikes, I decided to make them myself. Finally, I added in some waterfalls using the same water shader from earlier. Now with the level pretty much complete, it was time to add in a playable character, and the first step was to look for a decent Sonic model. There were a lot of tempting options to choose from, like Steven the Hedgehog, our bravest warrior, and, well, whatever this is. Ultimately, I decided to go with this classic Sonic look. The great thing about this model is that it was fully animated with pretty much everything I needed, so huge props to this guy. Some of the animations were a little bit weird when I imported them into Unity, so I had to clean them up a bit. Then I just slapped on the character controller that I've been using in my previous videos, and adjusted the values for things like speed and jump height. With Sonic moving around now, I started to add in features to make him interact with his environment, but this is where things started to fall apart. Getting Sonic to jump off springs worked just fine, basically you just walk into them and you get a jump out of it. But remember that loop in the level I skipped earlier? Let me show you why I held off on that until now. After trying my best to model it, it looks fine when you look at it like this, but since this is a 3D game, we need to look at it in three dimensions. And yeah. Just in case my previous videos didn't make this clear, I should reiterate that I'm not a 3D modeler. But on the bright side, at least it works. Kinda. Tunnels. To be honest, I'm not sure how these would work in a 3D space. They make sense looking from a 2D perspective, but if I were to try to do this in 3D, you would have to do something about the camera. A common approach to characters being confined in tight spaces is to pull the camera closer to the player to prevent them from being obscured by another object. I feel like this wouldn't really work because the size of the hole is basically the same size as Sonic, and he also gets in and out of the tunnel in about a second, so it would just be a really jarring experience. So instead I just decided to make it a simple teleport for a lack of a better solution. And the last interactable environment piece are the platforms. Some platforms go up and down, some go back and forth, and some just fall into nothingness after stepping on them. This last one was a bit tricky to get working. In game dev terms, basically I had to make the platform be the parent of Sonic when he steps on it, which to a regular person probably sounds really weird. Next I made a model for the rings using Pro Builder, and started placing them all around the level. To make it work in a 3D space, I basically duplicated some of the sets of rings and spread them out to allow players to pick a path. I also spread a bunch of rings at the top up here as a bonus for anyone who reaches the top platform. Now I needed some way of keeping track of how many rings Sonic had, so I made some UI elements that resembled the original game. I added a counter for how many rings were collected, a timer, a score, which at the moment doesn't do anything yet, and a life count for Sonic. The first time you collect something like 100 rings or 200 rings, Sonic will gain an extra life. 
I'm pretty sure the level has over 500 rings, so you could potentially get an additional 5 1-ups here. And I'm pretty sure all of these rings are also why this scene takes up so much storage space on my PC. Since Sonic can gain rings, we need to be able to make him lose them. This level contains 5 different enemies. Crab Meat, Chopper, Motobug, Buzz Bomber, and Neutron. I was able to find a 3D model for all of them except for Neutron. I considered replacing him with Jimmy Neutron, but I didn't want to make the game look like a scuffed modded version, so I'll just be leaving that enemy out. The first enemy I added was the Chopper. It's basically just a fish that jumps in and out of the water. In the 2D version, these things appeared to jump through the wooden bridge to take a bite out of Sonic, but I figured this didn't make sense and instead put them into the water next to the bridges. The next enemy I added was the Motobug and Crab Meat. These two enemies have very similar behaviors as they just walk around on the land. I used a nav mesh to define the area where they can walk, and made them patrol around their areas. And finally I added the Buzz Bombers. These are some flying bee enemies that will fly around and shoot a projectile at Sonic when he goes near them. After firing their shot, they will fly away. In my version, I made it so that after flying away, they won't reappear. But in the original, it was possible for them to reappear from the other side of the screen if they weren't defeated. After adding all the enemies, I made it so that if Sonic jumps on top of them, he'll destroy them. But if he walks right into them, he'll get hurt and lose all of his rings. And this is where it once again gets tricky. I noticed that if I collected a bunch of rings before getting hit, it would cause the game to lag for a moment. At first I thought this was because I was spawning in over 100 rings at the same time, so I tried to fix this by doing something called object pooling. Basically, instead of spawning in objects while the game is running, you create a pool before the game starts that'll hold all the objects. Then when you need them, you just move them out of the pool, and when you're done, you put them right back in. This is supposed to help with game performance, but even after doing this, I saw no noticeable improvement. And then I realized that I was spawning in over 100 rings in the same location that all had their own collisions enabled. So basically each ring is colliding with the other 100 rings all in the same spot, and Unity is trying to do some intense physics behind the scenes to try and figure out what to do. So even though I know what the problem is, I genuinely have no idea how to fix this. So if you have any idea of what to do, leave a comment or something so I don't run into this problem again in the future. Okay, getting back on topic, if Sonic has no rings when he gets hit, then he'll lose a life. I tried to replicate the death animation from the Sonic games. In this animation, the camera will stop following him, and he falls through the ground. I tried to do a similar thing if Sonic jumps into the water. Whenever Sonic loses a life, he'll respawn at the start or the last checkpoint he activated. However, Sonic can avoid taking damage from spikes, and destroy enemies if he's invincible. One of the power-ups from the CRTs gives Sonic invincibility for 20 seconds. During this time, Sonic will avoid all damage, and walking into enemies will destroy them. Similarly, Sonic can get a shield from the CRTs. This shield will prevent Sonic from taking damage one time, so instead of losing all of his rings, he'll just lose his shield. And finally, the last feature left to program in is the score mechanic. Sonic will gain points for jumping on enemies and destroying them. If he jumps on several enemies in a row without touching the ground, he will progressively get more points for each enemy destroyed. These numbers can range anywhere from 100 points all the way up to 10,000 points. Also, when Sonic reaches the end of the level and spins the goalpost, he will gain bonus points for finishing the level. Depending on how fast the level is beaten, you will gain anywhere from 0 to 50,000 points, so speedrunners can get rewarded. And for those who like to take their time and collect everything, you will also gain 100 points for each ring that was collected. These points will get tallied up at the end and added to your final score. Now with everything in the level finished, I think it's time to show you guys some gameplay. Alright, see ya.